Here we are at the customer's panel. First thing I want you to notice is this power switch right here to my left. This looks like a typical ordinary light switch, but what it is in reality is a disconnect switch which controls and cuts all power for the system. If this is in the off position, you will have no power to your panel. The outside of the panel is very simple. If you take a look, as you can probably see, here's the pump run switch. When the pump is on, this will be green. And then below it, you've got the alarm light. And also, as you can probably read below it, push to silence the alarm. When you have a high level or a low level alarm, this will flash red. And you also hear an audio beeping sound, which is quite annoying, especially at 2 in the morning. If you come out and you need to silence this alarm quickly, just simply push this button and that'll kill the, the alarm. But it will continue to flash as a reminder that you got an issue, an unresolved issue. So the outside is pretty simple, easy to understand and run. Let's take a look at the inside. Okay, looking inside, really there's the only thing you're really going to need to mess with very much at all is this switch right up here in the upper right hand corner. And it simply says auto off and manual. Very simple should remain in auto at all times in normal operation. Off or manual is only used if you have a problem. Looking below it, we've got a breakers, self-explanatory, we got some control functions, splicing. Up above it here, we've got a contactor which starts and stops the motor. Interesting to know, but not necessary. And then we have an hour meter of runtime for the pump, which can be useful in troubleshooting. And we have a uh, start stop time for the pump, so number of cycles. Uh, not all panels will have that, but this is a pretty good example of a typical pressure distribution panel. For reference, let's take a look at three more examples of some panels that may look like yours and they're very common in this area. Let's take a look. The three panels here we're going to show you all look identical on the outside. They all have still the push to silence alarm along with the visual reminder. It's the insides where they get a little different. We open this one up. This is an alarm only panel. There's no pump controlling function whatsoever. So it's still got the switch in the right hand side, but all this is going to do for you is control a alarm function period. The next one we're going to look at is very similar to the customers we showed you earlier. The only real difference is the it's it comes without the counter function, which is not necessary, nice, but not required. Otherwise, the same exact functions, runs the pump, has the alarm, etc. The last panel I'm going to show you is the most sophisticated of all the panels we typically deal with in most systems on a normal basis, for a residential application that is. You'll notice here you've got a computer controller and that just allows to set the amount of times the pump is allowed to run through the day. and other than that, it still does the exact same function. The pump chamber is what we're going to look at next. It's usually located downstream from the filter chamber and usually pretty nearby. So let's take a look inside here and see what we've got. First things we want to look at is make sure the floats are all still working properly that the level is where it needs to be, that there's no leaks in the pipe, and just visually inspect, make sure it all looks well. First of all, we want to look at the splice box right here. Take a look, see if the cords all look like they're connected securely. Other than that, I don't recommend you do anything else on an annual basis there. And we're moving over, this is a discharge pipe for the pump. Directly below this pipe is the pump can't see it, it's underwater. Everything looks good, don't see any leaks, pipe straight, etc. Moving over here we have the floats tree and water level is normal. We can see the different floats and they all look like they're functioning properly. So next we're going to pull this float tree out and actually test, make sure we can get a high level, low level alarm and that the pump functions as it should. Okay, first thing to do is pull the cords out of the way so you can pop it, pull it up on a wiggling motion. You immediately hear the low-level alarm. That's good. That's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And we'll just pull it clear up. I definitely recommend gloves for this 
phase of the operation. And I'm going to go ahead and tilt this, this bottom float up. When that comes up, the low level alarm goes off. That's perfect. That's test number one. Now test number two, we're going to see if the pump works. And to do that, we're going to lift up. This switch has to be up. It's the bottom one. That's the off switch. So the off switch for the pump has to be on. The next is the actual on switch. When this comes up, I don't know if you can hear that or not. The pump clicked on. That's perfect. This one will have to drop back down. And then the off will have to drop down. Yep. Everything works. Shut it right off. And then the last test to do is to check to make sure your high level alarm. This one's used the least. Well, I wouldn't say that, but it's, it was definitely worth checking. Works perfect. I'll say everything's working fine here. I don't see anything that really needs to be changed. So we'll just go ahead and put it back in its place. And we're done.